In this episode, we'll explore the process of writing a computer program. Real computer programming code can look pretty cryptic. To get us started programming, I want to bring it to the mundane. So, let's make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Really. When programmers sit down to write an app, they need first to figure out what they want to accomplish. So start with a simple flowchart. The goal is to create a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You have bread, peanut butter, and jelly. Combine these three ingredients to get the end result. And then we eat the sandwich. Yum. Once you've created a flowchart, it's time to work through the step-by-step -step process in English to make sure you know how the app will work. You can translate those steps into programming as another step later. Building this initial step-by-step -step process is called writing in pseudocode. It's very common in application development. Pseudocode helps in a couple of ways. It provides a roadmap that other programmers can follow. This is essential in a team environment, for example, with 10 different programmers working on a single app. They need to know what every other programmer is trying to accomplish. Second, and very important, computers are dumb, or at least extremely literal. Pseudocode helps make the discrete steps in a program logical. Cool? Let's make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I asked a group of my students to write in pseudocode a program for making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. First, we assembled the supplies. You can think of each type as an object. Bread, peanut butter, jelly, knife, spoon, plate. For simplicity's sake, we'll make some of these objects constants, meaning they won't change for this exercise. A knife is a knife. A spoon is a spoon. Other objects might differ or vary, if you will. What type of bread do you eat? White bread? Whole wheat? Some fancy artisan style? The bread object has variations. Thus, you can think about it as a variable. The same for peanut butter, creamy or crunchy, and the jelly, grape, plum, orange marmalade, and so on. To make it super easy for my students, we went with six constants. The bread is fancy artisan style, the peanut butter is creamy, the jelly is plum, the knife, spoon, and plate are just what they are. Each student used index cards to list, in pseudocode, the steps for making a sandwich. So let's see how they did. I'm the computer. Does this shirt make me look robotic? The first student up is James. Here are his steps. Put the bread on the plate. Open the peanut butter. Put the peanut butter on the bread. This is not going to end well. Let's try student number two. Martha's program starts with more detail. Open the bread. Remove two slices. Place the slices on the plate. Open the peanut butter. Spread the peanut butter on the bread. Open the jelly. This is getting messy. Martha obviously skipped a step or two. Student number three, Andre, offers better detail. Open the bread. Remove two slices. Place slices on the plate. If the peanut butter is closed, open it and proceed to step six. Pick up the knife. Dip the knife in the peanut butter. Spread the peanut butter on one slice of bread. Now that's a little more like it. Andre made very specific steps, leaving nothing to chance. Because computers don't do chance at all. They only do, literally, what they're told to do. Andre also included conditional statements. Those are the if statements in his program. Sweet. 
we can tack a couple more concepts on the PB&J analogy or program. Say, for example, the exercise called for making several sandwiches, enough to feed the class. You might want to go to an assembly line to make the process more efficient. This assembly line could use a programming concept called looping. For example, get a plate, get two slices of bread, put bread on plate, then repeat this process seven times. In other words, make a loop, do it again. Likewise, if we had a variety of sandwiches to make, the program could use branching. For example, the app is make a sandwich, but we have ingredients to make PB&J, bologna and cheese, and tuna salad. The basic process is the same, make a sandwich, but early in that process, right after putting bread on a plate, you would see options. If making a PB&J, go to option one. If making a bologna and cheese, go to option two. If making tuna salad, go to option three. Each of these options is a branch. Let me drop the sandwich making analogy for a moment and focus on some of the programming terms. An object is a construct that combines data and behavior. A file on your desktop is an object, for example. You can right-click and select properties. You can do things to the file, such as copy or move it. A constant often refers to something that won't change, such as the number pi. A variable you'll remember from math in school. In the equation on the screen, x and y are the variables. They change according to the value in each one. Finally, when you create specific steps in a program using proper programming language, you develop an algorithm. That algorithm includes conditional statements, step-by-step -step procedures, and more. The peanut butter and jelly program analogy helps make programming more understandable in a few ways. Use a flowchart for the big development picture. Use pseudocode to make the steps easy to follow. Go through the process to test your logic and how the computer will respond. And the best part? You get a delicious sandwich to eat at the end.